Next question is from Emoy5. What are some of the best workout tips for using resistance bands? Don't allow the bands to sit in the sun and dry out. Mm, Ooh, what happened to you? That's a good one. <laughs> Did they snap yeah. on you or what? I think everybody's had a yeah. band snap or on them once. Or don't let your trainer uh, put it around you and then have you run with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah. always uh, go, uh, yeah, yeah. ends in Have failure. you guys ever smacked a client with the, with the Dude, broken it, band? Yes. <laughs> oh, of course. God, it it came way. back, actually, I was I was doing that as, as a trainer, and it, it broke, but it got me. So it came back and it hit me in the ribs. I had like the biggest Welton bruise uh, for a couple weeks. Dude, I, I I hit one of my older male clients right in the pills. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, right in the mm. pills, hard. Uh, Last time he resigned. Poor guy. No, yeah. no. <laughs> 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 he stopped after that. <laughs> uh, so okay, so um, it's funny. The, the funny thing about resistance bands. This is very interesting. Um, you know, we have a bit of a unique perspective because we've been in the fitness space uh, professionally in the gym space for, for two decades or over two decades, right? So you see trends and what becomes favorable and unfavorable. And I bands probably, I can't think of another tool that went from uh, nobody respected at all to becoming extremely valuable in a relatively mm -hmm. short period of time. When I first started working out, you you couldn't you wouldn't catch a single lifter mm -hmm. using bands. If they did, they would be made fun of for the rest of your lives. Was it Westside Barbell that popularized them? They yes, yeah. it, it, powerlifting um, coaches were the ones that started po started popularizing bands because well, what happened was a lot of these coaches were studying the the lifting techniques uh, and workout programs of Eastern Bloc uh, lifters, uh, former Soviet Union uh, nations. Um, and remember when the when the Iron Curtain came down, all of their information became available to us. And these countries had like funding, massive funding from the, the their, their communist regime because it was a source of pride, right? That their athletes you know did stuff. So they 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 studied all kinds of different lifting techniques. And one thing that they discovered was variable resistance mm -hmm. was extremely effective at building strength. A very, very effective at building strength. Because it mimics the strength curve. It mimics the strength curve. So what I'm talking about is, and, and, and our coaches over here saw this, read this, and the smart ones applied it, and then you know they became dominant. So a, a strength curve is this, right? When you're doing a squat, for example, you're not the same strength throughout the whole squat. Most of us are strongest at the top of the squat and weakest at the bottom of a squat. So imagine when you're doing a heavy squat, uh, where are you most likely to, to, to not be able to lift the weight? Where are you most likely to be able to lift the most amount of weight, right? At the top, you're the strongest. At the bottom, you're the weakest. Now, the problem with free weights uh, or most machines or any other piece of equipment is that the the equipment's, excuse me, the resistance is pretty consistent. So if I'm squatting 300 pounds, whether I'm at the top of the squat or the bottom of the squat, it's 300 pounds. What a band does when I attach bands to the side of the bar and attach them down to an anchor. So let's say I tie them yeah, to the squat at the rack at the bottom, up at the so they're on the barbell and they're at the bottom of the squat rack. What a band does is it gives you more resistance at the top and less resistance at the bottom. Because when you have a band, the further you stretch it out, the harder the resistance becomes. And the the when it's barely stretched out, the resistance is very easily uh, excuse me, very easy. So when you're squatting with bands, now you have 300 pounds on the bar, but you have, let's say, an additional 100 pounds of resistance at the top mm -hmm. of the squat, but at the bottom, it's only maybe 20 pounds of resistance. And it gradually increases, so you're, it's not like a, a, a huge uh, demand all at once. No, and this resistance trains your muscles through uh, their natural strength curve, and it's, tr it's incredible for strength gains. That's my second favorite way to use resistance bands. My first favorite way is with a trigger session. Uh, trigger sessions work, they actually work better with bands than they do with weights. I think it's because bands don't cause as much damage to mm -hmm. muscle. Mm -hmm. And a trigger session, you'll find that in MAPS Anabolic, but for those of you who don't have the program, here's how you can apply uh, a trigger session. Get yourself a pair of bands. On your days off, do light exercises and movements for about 10 minutes, two or three times during the day, for maybe three or four of your target body parts. So let's say it's your sh your shoulders, your triceps, your biceps, uh, and your back. Um, so you're going to do band exercises for each of those, get a little bit of a pump, and just send a small muscle building signal. But really what you're doing is you're facilitating recovery, um, improving mobility, improving blood flow, and it turbocharges the results you get from your workouts. That's my favorite way to use it. Speaking them. of, are we, are we sold out still? Do you know? I don't know. 
I, I haven't seen a box come through in a while from uh, our bands. Are, do we have them? I haven't seen this come through. As soon as we list them, they're gone. No, I know. It's been crazy right now. I, I the, My favorite part about Resistance Band is just the convenience of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anybody who's been training in a gym long enough uh, knows that like when you're inside of a gym, one of the most versatile machines out there are the cable machines. Uh, you know, because you can move the the anchoring point, and you can move your body con contours to your body, and so you could do all these great. You could do a full body extra routine with one cable machine, like or a free motion machine, really well. Uh, good bands are the same way, mm -hmm. yeah. especially if you. have, I mean, the ones that we sell have like the different anchor points that so I could put at the bottom of a door, the side of a door, the top of the door. And so I can create all kinds of different angles, and I could do a full body routine, and I could carry it around in this little pouch. So I I love it for that. Like, of course, what Sal's saying uh, for my advanced lifters or listeners, I think uh, bands and chains are great tools to break through plateaus and to uh, in improve strength gains. Uh, but for the masses and for most people, I just think it's one of those things that you should you should have. Like everybody should just have a set of like good band, like a basic set of bands for that time that you're going to work out inside a hotel or mm -hmm. that time you're going to be at a park or that time that you're just going to you want to get a little bit of exercise in and you can get a really nice yeah. workout. Yeah, I really got into bands. Uh, I was thinking back when I was in college and I there was a, a physical therapy um, a clinic like uh, on site and uh, you know after after workouts I would kind of go in there and 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 discuss things with them and they they would work all with rubber bands they, they would treat everybody's rubber bands they were fantastic for rehabilitation uh you know exercises and that's when i started actually using them a lot more and started to actually superset them you know in combo with with dumbbells or barbells and i saw some some pretty awesome gains as a result from yeah that. I, I i love bands i i discovered them not that long ago uh maybe you know i, I want to say eight years ago uh, it's actually a long time ago but you know i've been working out for so long it seems like it was recent and ever since i discovered them they were like they were they were game changed adam do you remember one of the first maybe the first workout you and i ever had together do you remember you came to my studio my wellness facility and you and i did a deadlift yeah work out get together this wrong so i will be uh crushed yeah no, no, no. i have I've, I've video of that yeah oh you do yeah yeah we we, we don't anchored. show me because we were all jacked i know it's it so pretty i think i was like we were banded up on like 315 and i was pulling it like it was butter yeah, yeah. so yeah. so <laughs> what i was gonna say is here's another this is an advanced tip so if you're a beginner intermediate this probably won't benefit you but if you're an advanced lifter this is brilliant another good thing about the band is i can change where it's pulling from to emphasize different uh, different angles of a lift. So I'll give you an example. So Adam and I, we were doing deadlifts mm -hmm. that day together. Now, one of the things about a deadlift is you have to, you want to be able to pull back. You want to create the force that you're trying to create with the deadlift is not just to lift the weight up, but rather to kind of lift it back at the same time. Lock out. To lock it out. So what we did is we attached the bands to the bar in and then front it, of in front of us mm -hmm. on the on the on the cage. That way we have to really emphasize that pullback at the top. You do a few sets of that and then take the bands off. Watch your form. It primes that movement and gives you better technique with your lift. You could do this with a lot of different exercises. Right.